I just want y'all to know that y'all know that I advocate for men and you know that I love women. A year ago, we were talking about a gender war. A year later, we're speaking of marriage being an option. So we've come a long way. I know some of y'all might not see it that way, but that's exactly the way it is. And I'm going to continue to promote marriage because I happen to think that the nuclear family is the answer. Now, listen, <laughs> this is so funny because I got a whole group of people over here on the left saying she don't she don't advocate for men. She don't advocate for me. No, I don't pander for men. I don't pander for men because you guys are our leaders. You are in authority. I got to tell you what's good, but I got to tell you what needs to be worked out, too. But guess what else? It's really not my job to do so. I'm just paying attention. But our women, I'm all about you all. Y'all have the same thing I got. <laughs> we actually think alike. <laughs> so guess what? I'm going to make sure that you all are the best version of yourselves. If you want to be a wife, I want to be the example for you. Definitely. And we're going to be creating wives. We definitely are. So if y'all want me to pick a side, <laughs> no. I'm, someone actually told me the other day that, you know, you're quite balanced. And I am. And I'm going to add balance to this platform. Because <laughs> right now, y'all continuously want to have a gender war. And SB Nation is not about that. But anyway... If you wanted to follow someone that has balance, that wants to advocate for men and love on women, and we want to be the best versions of ourselves, you come on over to SB Nation, and that's exactly what we'll do, along with godly principles. We can't forget our creator. Wonder if all my bad decisions get accounted in the algorithms No statistician could dissuade me from my bigger vision I know my occupation's quite an unlikely place in this world to occupy and talk about upon a daily basis our information's predetermined by some biased business We all in sermon to silicon that push our lovely neighbors I'm done with paper chasing, think I'm on the bigger banquets This that full circle, new wave, energy on a Tuesday Turn a blue day to a bright hue, yellow with a smooth A in hair Extra fruité, the brand, you can't move me, the music is man It's a con job, but this grand I'm blessed with a great hand amongst many that stink And yeah, it took some hard work, but blind love play a huge role And they say that it don't Fool's gold. And if I know one thing, the truth's home. Even if it's a tough thing to swallow, an even harder thing to hold, and truly know without a doubt while on the globe. And even though that seems inherent, it ain't always so apparent. Dangle carrot, you ain't always gonna get it. But don't worry, it's a pretty February, and a year with more to carry, and more days is yet to come. Under the sun, taking the ferry to the city, where the moment's extra pretty. Like the people, like the idea that I keep inside my brain that isn't equal to the real world. All that stress ain't saving me fear though I swear to God I'm trying But they pushing the demons down my esophagus Screaming the easy life, what I want always Praise made up holidays, tell me that love is the answer Just to boost this economy Buy more, sell now, but I ain't following I ain't a hollow man, I'm full of them fall winds Take it all with a tall grin And if you feel it, do it with me and just sing with the song, say it all for what it is what it is, what it is, what it is It ain't all so big Hello, hello, hello. Hey guys, it's me, SB. Woo! I hope you all are having a terrific Saturday. Me and Mr. Boss got to get this thing together. Our time is off, but guess what? We're here. We're here and we're going to have an outstanding show. Shout out to you, Black Bear. Let's get this party started. I saw you. I saw you over there in the comment section. Thank you so much for being here to my Hey, Shug. <laughs> I love it. I love it. So listen, guys, y'all know what tonight is. We're going to have an outstanding night. We're continuing on with our conflict resolution, but it's going to be a little different than normal. This is me and TLA tonight. 
But guess what? Before we get started, I want to say hello to a few people in the comment section. But before I do that, how did y'all like my intro? It's what it is, is what it is. Did y'all hear that? I know y'all did. I love that song. But anyway, I want to say hello to a few people. We're going to get right into this. Let's see. Miss Scarlett, I see you. I see you, girl. Did you hit that like button? Did you give me a thumbs up on the way in? We got to do better, Miss Scarlett. I know you did. <laughs> Christopher Williams, thank you so much for your $4.99 super chat. Thank you. Time out. Bra. <laughs> oh, my goodness. I know where you start with this. Stephen Day. Stephen, hello. It's good to see you. Nurse Fancy, what's up? He's so helpful. How are you? Dare Long. Thanks, Dare, for all those shout outs. Thank you for being here. Y'all know TLA is here and he's waiting. Cora, it's good to see you. Listen, guys, I know I probably forget a lot of people, but forgive me if y'all coming into the live. Make sure you give me the thumbs up. Lady Navoa, it's good to see you. Definitely. Oh, is anybody else? Listen, I'm going to go ahead and get this thing started because TLA is back there and we're going to have a conversation. And we're just going to get started. TLA, come on up. Here he is. Let me, let me hit a little bit of <laughs> a little sound for myself. How are y'all doing? Doing good. <laughs> good. Oh, y'all got some sound on deck, man. Your production value, uh, SB, is amazing. Congrats on the 10,000 subscribers. You are really growing. A lot of people are rocking with you. <laughs> And uh, you are really putting a lot of uh, a lot of money and, and effort into the channel. And your, your production value really is better than mine. So I need to take notes from you. You got all the camera angles, got the switches going. Looks really, really nice. Thank you so very much. Listen, I got to tell I got to tell you thank you, because if it wasn't for you, you already know that Unsolicited wouldn't be here today. Do you know that? Do you recall that? No, I don't know that because I'm looking at your channel, man. You were going to be here regardless. <laughs> <laughs> well, I probably would have, but it wouldn't have been unsolicited because if you recall the first time that I was on your show, um, I came in as, oh gosh, I forgot, security boss making the cut. Mm. And for making the cut, remember, um, Ami was like my. You know, I love Ami and the Hellcat. Ami really. and the Hellcat. Yeah, yeah. You had that slick video and everything. Man. Exactly. Your production value has always been high. Thank you. I love Ami and the Hellcat. And we used to do everything kind of together. And the first time I came to your panel, you was like, you know, you, you might want to break it up because people don't know which way to go if you're putting it all in one. And that mm -hmm. was the first time that we did Unsolicited. And since then, and that was in September 2021. Mm -hmm. And it's been now a year and a few months. And here we are. We had 10,000 subscribers. Uh, unsolicited is growing. People are tuning in. They're actually listening. Um, it's been good. So That's thank amazing. You. Yeah, you're growing way faster than me. I remember when I started uh, to get to 1,000 subscribers, it took me a year, a little bit over a year. Wow. And so you you were you were really like way ahead of me. You're doing great. <laughs> You're like ten awesome. times faster than where I was. So just imagine, you know, what 2023 is going to bring. Oh, I don't know, but I'm hoping hoping that we continue to grow. Hoping that the message keeps getting out there because I'm trying to change some lives. I'm trying to bring some women. I'm gonna make some women some wives. Yes. And so do it for some good men that want to be husbands. Listen, SB, we looking for them. Okay, we are I looking for these wives. Where they at, man? We tired out here. These little, you know, these other women. We, we're the real solid wives. At that's 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 what we're looking for. I'm ready for it. Listen, I've been calling them city girls because I got to figure out a way to separate them because we got these girls over here like you talking about. And we do, we got these women here too. these women that are saying, SB, can you can we have a consult? Can I talk to you? How do I do this? How do I do that? So it lets me know that there are two different women out there. Yes. I can't just group them all together. So I'm like, OK, I hear you. Let's do this. So I got to thank you for you. that. And I also got to tell you something else. Um, You know, Ami is still free. <laughs> Is he really? Yes. Is he out on bond? <laughs> he hasn't went to trial yet? No, nothing. Wow. Have, well, let me just say this. I haven't seen anything. All I see is he's still making money. He's still doing his thing. Has replaced all those cars and uh, everything else. And listen, he's gotten his, managed to get himself in another lawsuit. Now it's about his, um, his gears, the shoes. Somebody else is suing about the product. So it's like, oh, man. Really? I mean, what's he got to lose? The feds were already talking about trying to give him 400 years. I come out, I, I make this money too. I mean, you gonna sue me and the feds try to, you know, they're gonna get him for something. I, I, I think the last time I followed up with it, his attorney was trying to go to negotiate for like two years or something like that. 
If he could get two years, that'd be amazing because he's got so much money. That's what a lot of, you know, I don't really want to get deep into it, but that's what a lot of these white people do. I mean, they will commit these these white collar crimes and make about 18 million, go in and serve two years, come out. You know, maybe they had to pay a two million dollar fine. Now they're 16, 16 million to the good. That's right. So, you, you know, you say, well, would you give up your life? Would you give up two years of your life for 16 million? Initially, you'd be like, "No, I wouldn't do that." But they're like sixteen million, you know, like, uh, you know, if it's, a, it's a, if it's with the feds and it's all clean, you're not going to get stabbed or anything. You know, chill out for two years, you come out sixteen million. I mean, that's generational wealth, right? Absolutely. Now your kids, your grandkids, all these people down the line from you are taken care of because you did, you know, a two year sacrifice. There's a lot of men that sacrificed 40 years and, you know, when they die and they ain't got nothing to pass down. So it's interesting. I don't want to go down that road, but yeah, I life is, life is weird. Shout out to Omi, man. If he's still out. Yeah, he is <laughs> he definitely making videos and everything. But since then I've sold my Hellcat, moved on and got some other things. But anyway, let's get into this. Um, I don't know if you've ever said this before, but why did you choose YouTube? Yeah, that was interesting. You know, um, I do some consults sometimes and people want to know if they should go to law school. And, you know, when we were coming up, you know, uh, degrees meant a lot, right? Even a college degree, you can come out, when I was coming up, you can come out of of, of college with a degree and be making 50000 a year. And that was a good job. And nowadays it's like... Is the degrees are really so undervalued. At any rate, um, I became an attorney and, and and like most people, I didn't know what I was getting myself into. And, you know, 10 years in, I was like, you know, this is not what I what I really wanted. 15 years in, I was really done with it. And then 20 years, I was looking for an escape. And the problem is when you do something for 20 years, you really don't know anything else. Like, I, I don't know how to be a baseball player. I don't know, you know, how to fix cars. I don't know how to paint. All I know is about this law stuff. And, you know, I was looking for ways just to, to do something different with my life. And I started a, a YouTube channel thinking that, you know, there are big mistakes that men are making that are so easy to, to avoid. You know, there are a lot of smaller mistakes that are tougher, but if you can avoid the big mistakes, which are easy, that's, that's that all, all men should do this, but they don't know. Uh, a lot of men are, are lacking a lot of wisdom. Now women are too, but you know, women have other safeguards. The government's going to look out for women a little bit more and it's going to look out for men. And over my 20 years, you know, I had represented both men and women and children and grandparents. I represented everybody. Uh, but I decided to make this channel just to, to give away some, some free information. You know, they say when an old person dies, it's like a, a library burning down. And I just had a, a birthday. I'm 46. And, you know, you may say, oh, well, that's not, you know, you're still young. Uh, you know, you're getting up there. So I decided to, uh, to, to get on here and really just put out some videos on uh, information that men can use to improve their lives. And it doesn't cost me anything just to sit here, sit back and just put brothers on game and tell them, you know, it's so easy for me. I've been doing it for 20 years. If if you come to my office for a divorce, I know you would never do that. I know you're happily married. But if you would come to my office for a divorce, you would ask me all these questions. And these are the same questions that I've been hearing for two decades. I can answer these questions in my sleep. So when somebody hits the link and comes up on the panel and asks me a question, I mean, it's nothing to me, but it's so valuable to them, right? So it's very easy for me to get this information, although if we're going to be honest, it's cost me my, my whole adult career to learn this stuff. But since it's so easy for me, I said, well, I'll just start a YouTube channel and give this stuff away. I had no idea about this money. <laughs> I had no idea these YouTubers. I had never met a YouTuber in my life. I was older when I started. I had no idea the money was was like that. I remember when I got monetized after over a year. It took me a little bit over a year to get a thousand subscribers. And I, um, the reason that I got monetized because this uh, this great man, one of the founders of the Manosphere, O'Shea Duke Jackson, he did a collab with me, 
and that helped me uh, put some put some subscribers under my belt. And I emailed him because I got my first check. It was like like a hundred and twenty six dollars or so. I still got that email somewhere. I was like, oh my god, Oje, they sent me like a hundred and twenty six dollars. Like, why didn't everybody do YouTube? You can pay a phone bill with this or something. Like, you know, it's just a free phone bill. Over $126. I, I didn't know. I was sold. There was so much stuff I didn't know. I was older when I started this. So I, and I didn't have any help uh, for that first year. I was making all, all types of mistakes. So at any rate, that was a long-winded answer of why I started a YouTube channel. It's certainly morphed. I never thought I would be here. I really never thought I'd get to 100,000 subs. Even back then, you know, the Me Too movement a few years ago was really strong. And I was like, you know, I'll probably get canceled like everybody else. Um, I, I, there's no way that, that I thought that I would get to 100,000. So to be sitting at 250,000 is just is crazy to me. So we got a lot in common because us too. And when I say us, y'all, everybody mostly knows that Mr. Boss is behind the camera. And when this camera comes on or when I'm here speaking, he's the person that turns it on and turns it off. I know nothing about youtube <laughs> i needed a mr boss when i started yes it's such a I help right nothing. and he didn't either but he's that electronic guy you know he mm. loved the stuff the camera everything electronic so it was easy for him and en enjoyable so for me to get here and just sit and talk was like okay plus plus let's do it yeah you're exactly right and me too i felt like i had something to offer and it was stemming from my profession too because i used to have people come in the office for a job and we always end up talking about personal stuff and they would just tell me everything, all types of stuff. And I'd be like, really, really? You know, and they would sit there and listen to everything I had to say and they would know me for nothing and vice versa. So I understand when you say that, how you just didn't have any idea and the money part, we didn't either. Mm -hmm. you know, so we're just getting into it. And to reach 10,000, we did not see it back then. But listening to you and seeing you going through it, you made it real for us. Mm. So I got to get your props and you share, you share all the time and you've always shared for this last year, you shared everything. So you made it real where others wouldn't. I always say this is like, um, I used to tell my husband, I was like, you know what? Um, YouTube is kind of like the real estate business. You know, when I finally first got into real estate, I used to think people were going to be helpful. Mm -hmm. um, but then I found out real, real quick that no, 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 no. They're not going to help you. You got to do it yourself. And yes. You, though, on the other hand, you were that person that was willing to give information and to help others out. So I definitely appreciate you again for that. So I appreciate that. Going. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Now, the other thing, I got you two questions I'm going to ask about YouTube and then we're going to move on. The first question is, how long do you think you're going to be in this business? You know, I'm 46 and I said, you know, I would love it if I was off this thing by the time I was 50. Y'all ain't going to have me up here, you know, 65, 70 years old, you know, stumbling around looking like Joe Biden. You know, they say this this uh, this guy who worked at YouTube for over 10 years in the in the content creator section of YouTube or whatever, he did all these studies on YouTube. That was his job when he worked there. And he came with, out with a video last year and he said, the vast majority of YouTubers, successful YouTubers, not just regular people who are just, you know, making videos just to make them, but people who are successful. I think he said the average career is like five to seven years, like almost nobody makes it longer than seven years. You know, maybe you can name, you know, 15 people or 20 people who've had, you know, YouTube channels over seven years who are successful. But that's out of the millions and millions that have stopped, right? So I want to be, you know, realistic. Everybody thinks, you know, that they're special. But at the end of the day, everybody's usually, you know, just part of the pack. So I say, well, listen, if I could, you know, put another four or five years on this thing, uh, then, then that would be great. Um, sometimes I wonder if people are really listening, you know. They are, but I think a lot more should be listening, to be honest. I'm a little egotistical. You know, every now and then I get a comment about, you know, uh, you really changed my life and you gave me some great information. But it's, it's more comments. Oh, you know, your milk dud head ass and this and that. You know, so it's like it's, it's all entertainment. So I don't, I don't know. I, I never started out, you know, my, my career trying to be an entertainer, although apparently that's what it's turned into. So maybe about four or five more years, and then hopefully I can hang it up. I, don't, I ain't trying to be out here like Joe Biden. Yeah, you're right. 
bees <laughs> around right now. But you know what? Um, you, you got you got a lot of life in you, though. So yeah, I could definitely see another five or six years. Definitely. Mm, I'm trying, man. We we we're we gonna see. We gonna cross our fingers. Wow. So listen, okay. My question is, how would you advise another YouTuber like myself to handle YouTube beefs? Ooh, now uh, this this is this is this is a great topic. This is a great topic because <clears throat> I think that beefs can be a blessing. Yeah, but they can be so dangerous, so dangerous. I remember there's this YouTuber named uh, Tasha K, and she came after me when I had about forty thousand subs. So really, not that many, forty fifty thousand. And she had all, was over 200 black women emailing me talking. Can I curse on here? I don't, I don't know if I can yeah, curse yeah. on right, that. They, they were talking mess. And I was shocked. I was like, well, that's the end of my channel because I had never experienced anything like that. I will tell you, though, I got, you know, over a thousand subscribers a day for like seven days because this lady with um, a channel with a million subscribers was uh was was attacking me and it i mean i got some i should cut tasha k a check to be honest because i got she it was a blessing <laughs> it was a blessing but um there are some beefs most beefs are not that way there are rules to beefing you know i have, I have a course a youtube course i actually have two and i, I talk about this in my course because it is really an art to it you know, one of the one of the rules to beef, and if you're going to beef, is that you always want to beef with someone who's substantially bigger than you. Really, what you want is a benefit. You don't want to be out here beefing just to beef, right? Because um, it's a waste of time, and you could be making content that could be getting you know thousands of views, but yet you're going back and forth on some some beef stuff. So, you know, one of the rules is you want to make sure that the person is substantially. Uh, bigger than you. So if I was going to beef with Natasha K, you know, she has a million and I have 50,000, you know, that's good. But there's another rule, you know, you want to beef with someone who is kind of contained. You don't want to beef with someone who can really, who will really wild out. Uh, Tasha K, when she came at me, you know, to her credit, because of all the pushback she got, she issued an apology, right? Which is pretty rare for her. She didn't, she didn't even apologize to, Car to Cardi B. But, you know, she she has a family. She has a million subs who are, you know, they, they, they're going to rock with her, but, you know, they ain't going to let her get too crazy. I mean, I don't know. The stuff with Larry Reed is different. But at the end of the day, she's not going to, she's not going to go too wild. But for example, there's a channel called um, 21 Studios. And I would never beef with them because they will, they'll dox you, they'll dox your parents, they'll dox your children. I mean, there's no limits. They've been beefing with uh, this guy, Anthony Dream Jobs, that he's been beefing with uh, Donovan Sharp. And there are no limits to this dude. Mm. I mean, I, they're just none. So you don't, you don't want to beef with somebody like that that will just take it to a place where you're not willing to go. And I'm sitting here with a tie on. So, you know, I'm not really cursing people out on my channel or anything. So I'm so constrained myself. I want to beef with somebody who's kind of constrained like me because I'm I'm going to I'm not going to go very far at all with it. Right. Um, so you want to make sure that the person is is bigger than you, but that you also want to make sure that they're not going to go crazy and, you know, show up to your doorstep or or dox your your kids, you know what I'm saying? You, they're showing your kids social security numbers online, trying to take down your Instagram with hacking, trying to take down your website, just crazy stuff right now. Um, you know, maybe in their mind they're justified and maybe they could be, I don't know, but it's, it's not worth it. So what I try to do is I, I look at beef in a different way. Even now, you know, there are channels that are, that will be smaller than me or bigger than me that'll, that'll that'll you know make videos about me generally i default to just ignoring it and kevin kevin samuels told me that uh, a while back because that that was his approach and it really works man because what i've learned is that if you don't mention somebody there's only so many times they can make a video about you i've only got one guy who's been making videos about me for two years and 
I ain't mentioned him, and he'll probably come out with a video tomorrow. And you know, he has ten thousand subs somehow, and he just makes he makes videos about me. But he's harmless and it's fine. Um, but I typically don't respond to beef at all. However, there are people who who say things, and I use these things for content. So, for example, if Tasha K, uh, you know, says some wild stuff about me, like I don't date uh, black women, I only date Asians and white women, and all this other stuff, I'll actually play that stuff on my channel. Right? There was this girl talking about uh, this girl I had never met. She's talking about I had a small penis and all that. Not only did I play that part over and over where she said I had a small penis, I actually added to it and I put words in the mouth. I said that she said that I had a small dick and small balls. Like I'm adding to the beef, <laughs> right? Because it's for content. Right. And she got mad at that. Oh, I didn't say that about the balls. Like whatever, lady. Oh, you know what right. I'm saying? Now she mad about she mad at me, right? Because I'm misquoting her, attacking me. You took so, you know, away. There, there are levels to the beef, right? <laughs> but most beef, I would just say, you know, don't entertain it. But I mean, sometimes it'll really help you, to be honest. So, what do you think about striking their videos if they take your content? I never strike videos. Okay. I'm, I'm never struck. You know, people have uploaded whole streams of mine. I, I never do. I'm never. Uh, struck a video now, and I've told people, you know, I was telling people at 20,000 when I had 20,000 subs, I wasn't gonna strike it, and I'm 250,000, I ain't struck nothing. I mean, it could be a point where I reach like Kevin Samuel status and I'm doing an Instagram, and before I can put the Instagram on YouTube, they done downloaded the whole Instagram and put it on YouTube, so now they're stealing my views. I mean, at some point, right. You got to draw a line, especially when you're like Kevin. He was so big. I mean, they're really taking tens of thousands of dollars out that man's pocket. You mm -hmm. can't allow that to happen. But when people steal my content, I've noticed that I still get paid. So I, I ain't okay. sweating that. All right. All right, guys, in the comment section, I hope y'all hearing all this. He's giving us some excellent information, especially if you're a YouTuber. But we're going to take a quick break because this next um, line of questioning, whew, it might be a little deep. So I'm going to take a, just a minute and I'm going to go read these super chats and we're going to get back into it. So hopefully we can do that. Christopher Williams, thank you so much for your $49.99 super chat. He says TLA. Yeah. Shout out to Christopher Williams, man. This brother right here supports me so strongly, but not only me, supports so many other black content creators in this, uh, in, in the men centric space really one of the strongest brothers out here. So it's, it's so great to see brother Christopher Williams out here, man. Shout out to Christopher. Yes. Big Ant, Big Ant 11. Thank you so much for your $20 super chat. He says, Hey, SB, a uh, hi SB. Um, all my, t all my time in the military and my mom just threatened me with a switch <laughs> with a switch. Can you ask lead attorney if I can sue for emotional distress and threats? <laughs> <laughs> Depends on what he did to earn that threat with the switch. I remember them switches, boy. It was, I don't know. You, go ahead and tell them, Lee. Mommies get passes. Mommies get passes? Yeah. You don't think so? For what? Whatever they do. Mm, they get way more. They get way more. <laughs> yeah. They get way more um, benefit of the doubt than than fathers. That's for dang sure. You're exactly you right about that. Absolutely, they do. In Allen's uh, 007RX, thank you so much for your $9.99 super chat. He says, excited for the great conversation. Thank you so much. Yeah, shout out to the Russian. Shout out to Ann Allen, man. She's an excellent mm -hmm. content creator in her own right and been supporting me forever. Uh, this is uh, Gabriel7. Thank you so much. A new subscriber. Thank you so much for your $5 super chat. Salute, SB, TLA. Good to see you, um, senior. Yes, yeah, senor, right? You got to learn yeah. that Spanish oh now. As we we, we going to teach you that Spanish. Shout out, to. Yeah, shout out to Gabriel. Excellent, brother. Always been supportive. Me. Saludos, Gabriel. Como estamos? Shout out to Gabriel. Uh -oh, look at look, living in Mexico did you some good, right? Listen, I learned a lot of stuff living down there. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, was you a passport? I'm not going to go there right now. Nope, nope, nope. Take it back. 
Uh-huh. Shout out to the passport, bros. No, let's just stop right now. Hold on. Uh, Chaz, Sade, Sade, how you doing tonight? Shout out to the wives coming through to uh, to share a different message. Thank you, Chaz, Sade, for your $10 super chat. Sade is my girl. She's wife life. Yeah, so let's to, to Chaz. And Allen, thank you so much for your $4.99 super chat. Let's get the likes for SB and TLA. Thank you. A Russian. All right, that's it for now. So we're going to continue on. Now, this next part is this. Uh, why are men not proposing marriage? Mm, why are men not proposing marriage? Are they not proposing marriage? No, from what I'm hearing, the proposal rate is a little low. Yeah, well, I mean, if we're going to be honest, if we're really going to be honest, marriage is typically not benefited the man so much and the majority of the time it's really the man just kind of going along and the woman saying you know pressure oh i like this ring or you know we've been together two years or you know when they really hit you it's like you shit or get off the pot right you know it's really been the women who are pushing for the you know they'll frame it in terms of security and things of this nature and so it's 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 always been the, the the kind of the case where women are the usually the ones in the driver's seats when when there there is a proposal and now it's time to pick out the cake and time to pick out the napkins and the dinner settings and all this the man is just like whatever you know here's here's the money here's the check you know it's usually the women who are typically involved in the in all the arrangements it's kind of a woman's thing. So, you know, it, it really isn't so surprising that that men are hesitant to 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 propose. Although I will say this, you know, we can get on this YouTube thing and we're all following each other and it's the same, you know, 40 damn channels. But th- this is these 40 channels are not the real world. You know, you'll you'll go to the mall. You know, I can meet people who have who've never heard of, of me, never heard of MTR, never heard of you, never heard of Kevin Samuels, particularly women. And people are just living their own lives. Most men want uh, a long term committed relationship. Now, that's not the same the same thing as saying they want marriage, right? Because marriage is so punitive sometimes. But most men want commitment. Right. It's just this 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 framework that we have, this legal framework, what the institution of marriage has become these days is is not in a individual man's best interest. So, 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 so much of the time. So, you know, men do want committed relationships. Most men do want children. Right. Most men want to be good fathers, good, good boyfriends, good husbands. But these laws, man, they are not favoring, they're not favoring men. So if men are like, hey man, I love you, baby, and you know, we can do this or we can do that. But this this marriage thing, mm-mm. now I don't know if that's the right way to go in most cases. I think there is a strong case to, for marriage to uh to I think there's a strong case to be made for marriage, depending on the person. And marriage is like sex, you know, sex can be really dangerous, <laughs> uh, but there's ways to to make it safer. Is it a guarantee? No, right? But you can have safe sex and you can have a safe marriage in, in most aspects. And the, the safest way, if you want to, if you want to say sex with a condom makes sex safe, then marriage with a prenup makes marriage safe now if we're really going to be precise we need to say that no sex is safe you're just talking about sex that's safer right and no marriage is safe it's just safer but you know if 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 a condom can protect you you know 98 percent, 99 percent of all these you know viruses and stuff floating around 98 99 percent that's that's nice right is it guaranteed no Same thing with a prenup. A prenup is going to protect you against so many of the tragedies that befall men. Most men don't get them. You know, I had a young brother on my channel. 
he came up, he was 26, you know, had all, all the future ahead of him, smart. He was a chemist, young, young black brother chemist. And he was saying that <clears throat> he was going to get married. He was asking me for my advice. So I told him about the prenup. He was like, oh, okay, I'm going to get a prenup. Then he came back four months later to, to ask me something else. I was like, hey, what about that prenup? No, I ain't got any yet. And I was like, you know, I asked him why, and he was making up all these pretexts. He was making up all these excuses, which kind of leads us now to another thing about men being scared of their women, which is why there are so many men married in the first place. Like all this stuff is together, man. Women will absolutely take a man by the nostrils and lead him to the altar. It happens so much. All, all this stuff is so complicated, you know. Uh, I used to see this stuff like y'all before I really started practicing, and then you know, 10 years in, 15 years in, I'm making connections where it's like, okay, I really see what's going on. And so much of this stuff is is interwoven. But yeah, marriage doesn't benefit the man so much. Now you may say, well, a marriage, a good marriage, if there's going to be children, it provides stability to the children and things of that nature. And that's true. So maybe a man gets an indirect benefit by having his children raised in a in a in a two parent household, but if you're a divorce attorney, or if you're anyone over the age of twenty five, you know that a woman can just snap her fingers and there went your stable household. You know, anybody. You know what do they say? Seventy to eighty percent of all these divorces are filed by women. So you can give a woman two kids. You're like, oh, I've got my kids in a two in a two parent household. You wake up on Tuesday, she came to my office and, and paid me thirty five hundred, and now I'm drafting up your 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 complaint for divorce that you're going to receive at your job from the sheriff, right? And, and now you're disappointed. <laughs> now you want to kill her, right? It's like it's it's all it's, it's it's all messed up. It's all messed up. Don't get me to rambling, man. Because I didn't say she want to want to kill her. <laughs> Please, I have, um, you're probably not going to believe this, but I, I'm learning now that there are two types of marriage. Mm -hmm. Maybe not when it gets to you, though. It's only one type and it's a bad one when it comes to you. But the two types are that there's a covenant marriage and there's a contractual marriage. And I'm, I'm like, wow, that kind of makes sense a little bit because what I'm hearing people are getting out of sounds like a contract marriage, straight business. And that's not what my husband and I have. So I can see that. But even with that, I still think that a prenup is a good thing to have, especially, and what, what, let me say it like this. I don't know if it's for everybody, meaning like my husband and I were young. I was his second wife. We came in. We just had our basic jobs in a plan. So we started at ground zero per se. You know, we wouldn't broke, but we didn't have a lot. So we came in together, no prenups, and we build together. And we had one pot. We put everything in one pot until we got several pots. But everything goes in one pot. Um, and I would actually tell someone to do that if they're at that point in their life, me and young folks. But I'm not so unrealistic that I know when a man or a woman comes into a relationship and they already have built certain things as individuals that they want to protect it. So I would tell though that group of people also to get a prenup. Um, because as I'm learning too, I'm thinking like my mom passed away a year ago and, you know, I'm entitled to a certain things, but seeing that my husband and I have been together for so long, that's his mom too. So he's entitled to what I'm entitled, but you know, all might not agree to that or agree with that. So I do understand the, you know, the reasoning for the prenup and I actually agree with it. But what do you think about these two types of marriages and do I need to explain them to you or does yeah, I need I need an explanation for what a covenant marriage is. A covenant marriage is a, a marriage that's based on godly principles, principles, meaning that you took your vows and your vow was made to stay committed to that relationship, but you also have God in the forefront. So despite what you or he do, the most important thing is the relationship and not to disappoint your creator. It's, it's built on the order, the traditional order of husband, well, God, husband, a woman and children or Jesus, husband, woman, and children. It's more of a traditional way to be married. Um, of, co of course, it has some business aspects to it because, you know, every relationship does, but I wouldn't, I don't see my husband as a business agreement by any means. I don't see us having a business arrangement by any means. There's nothing about us that's 50, 50, you know, even though we had to uh, be legal by the laws of the land, me and my husband are not a business. 
we definitely, my, my relationship with him or me, my longevity with him is based on my relationship with my creator. It's not yeah, about him. Okay. So that's the covenant. Then when I'm hearing people far as this business agreement, I hear people say all the time, this business because you went and signed the contract downtown or wherever you got your, your marriage license. Yeah, but I get that too. But that's not going to keep anybody together. Businesses fall apart all the time. A covenant marriage is going to keep people together? It, it actually does because it's not about the person that you're married to. It's about pleasing someone that's greater than your actual husband. Okay, so if the husband makes mistakes, the wife is going to stay with the husband who's making mistakes because the the wife is not trying to please the husband. The wife is trying to please the greater power? Yeah. yeah your, okay. your duty goes towards, your, your, your reasoning for being there, your purpose for being married is not solely for your happiness and for your gratification. It's for the purpose that God put us here, and that was to be fruitful and to multiply. And that's what marriage is supposed to be about. Okay. So I'm married in a covenant marriage. Can my wife get angry and slap me? <laughs> yeah, yeah, she can. And can she stab me with a fork? I guess she could. I mean, yeah. I don't She's, I mean, sure she could, but stay she, around? maybe not. Maybe not. Should you stay around? That yeah, she stabs me with a fork. I've represented so many guys, listen. Don't argue in the kitchen. <laughs> Do not argue in the kitchen. All right. If 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 your wife stab in a covenant marriage, if your wife just gets angry and stabs you with a fork, since it's a covenant marriage, you're supposed to stay together. I would. Okay. What if but she stab? Wait, 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 wait. No. What if she stabs me with a knife? Listen. Don't let's don't forget the premise. Just cause the. I'm just woman, asking because I don't. I'm, 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 I'm gonna give it to you though because in the covenant marriage, the behavior shouldn't be like that. That shouldn't be what's happening. Um, we shouldn't be behaving that way because we, again, we're in relationship with the creator. And in that relationship, we both are, are operating in godly principles. And godly principles don't say stab your husband. It don't say go after him with a fork. It doesn't say cheat on your wife. It doesn't say steal money. It doesn't say it's a whole lot of principles. Godly that principles into. say that humans are fallible. Humans exactly. are sinful. Humans make mistakes. A mistake is coming after your husband with a knife and stabbing him. It could godly, pr godly principles contemplate a wife stabbing her husband with a knife because mm -hmm. we're all full, we're all full of sin. And so if that's the case, if my wife stabs me with a knife in the abdomen because I'm in a covenant marriage, I'm I'm supposed to just forgive that, get some therapy, go to the hospital, go to emergency surgery and then come home and lay in the same bed with her and not get divorced. No, abuse is not acceptable in any means. By any means is abuse acceptable. I thought now, we were talking about covenants and godly We principles. are. I didn't say divorce. I definitely didn't say divorce, but sometimes you have to separate yourself. If this person is going through something that they can't, uh, you know, that may could be mental illness, it could be something wrong with that person. That's not normal behavior. Norm well, mental I illness isn't a normal behavior in this country? No, well, it's not. It could be undiagnosed. Remember, until somebody di diagnoses it, it's not, it don't exist. So, um, and wait, until somebody diagnoses your mental, mental illness, illness, your mental illness doesn't exist? It don't. And I hope you know what I mean by that. I do not know what you mean by that. Like, if, if I'm too poor to get my schizophrenia diagnosed, I don't have sick schizophrenia? The people around around you will recognize that you do or that you are. Well, actually, they probably wouldn't be able to label it. But until you go get some help or go until somebody says this person is schizophrenic or they're able to be diagnosed, it won't be recognized. But it doesn't mean I don't have it. No, no, I didn't say that. No, you definitely have it. And your family members know that you're off. But until, and the reason why I'm saying this is because I deal with a lot of criminal activity. And the business that I am, we deal with a lot of weaponry and laws and things of that nature. And I've noticed that we have to fill out a lot of paperwork when it comes to weaponry. And even with the things that we do, even fill it, even to get a license, we have to fill out a lot of things. We have to say uh, this person hasn't been diagnosed or there's no um, there's no. Uh, what do you call it? There's no history of this person having any uh, psychological impairments or what have you. We have to say that. So that tells me that until somebody has clarified or declared this person psychologically inept or what have you, then that person can move around just as though there are no issues. 
as far as getting a license for a weapon, as far as getting a license as a police officer, as far all of that. Now, once they are put to the test or somebody diagnosed them, now we have issues. Now we, now somebody's looking at it. But there are a lot of people that are out here that are suffering from mental illness, just like you stated, that nobody has de declared them that way. And we interact with them all the time and we never know what they're going to do. Never yeah. know. I, I do this like on a regular basis that I see people that I know this person should have been declared incompetent or what have you. And, and it hasn't happened. And those, yeah. are the, those are some of the people right now that are able to purchase weapons and do certain things. And we're like, now somebody should have known, but it wasn't diagnosed. Yeah, I, I guess I'm just confused about where you draw the line, because you say in a covenant marriage, your wife can slap you. In your covenant marriage, your wife can stab you with a fork. But if she stabs you with a knife, then that's too much. That's abuse. No, no, all abuse is too much. But when you say can, I'm, I'm assuming you mean, could it happen? And I'm saying to you, oh, yes, I agree that it could happen. Is it acceptable? No, it's not an acceptable thing to be abused. But can you get divorced I, from it in a covenant listen, marriage? I wouldn't readily get divorced, but I would. So I would if someone stabbed you with a knife, you wouldn't get divorced? No, I wouldn't. I would separate now. I wouldn't readily, because I, I don't know the situation. I don't know the situation. I would definitely separate myself, but I wouldn't necessarily get divorced. I don't know. You giving me a whole bunch of what ifs. These you are what ifs I that happen on a daily. Maybe you guys don't know this. These are what ifs that happen on a daily basis. There's so much domestic violence, men to women and women to men that happen in this country. But, These are but, real but, issues. But Lee. Guys get stabbed with butter knives and forks all the time. Guys get slapped all the time in their marriages. This is not something that's like, oh, why are you saying this? This happens no, every saying, day. No, mm -hmm. I'm agreeing with you that we should separate, but you're saying divorce. I don't know what brought this on. I don't know. the. I don't know. I don't know what, what brought it on was that you got stabbed with a knife. No. Oh, well, I mean, I, I have no idea. That just doesn't seem like a regular day for me. That's yeah, not I guess we would just, I guess you were explaining to me covenant marriage and I was trying to figure out how it differed from a, a business marriage. And if you're saying that we're going to stick together because it's not about pleasing the spouse, it's about pleasing the higher power. It sounds like you're kind of saying that the higher power is pleased if I stick around after having getting stabbed with a fork in the back. No, you don't even need to stick around, but we don't just leave a person out there. I wouldn't just leave a person for himself. I've been with Mr. Boss 20 plus years. If he all of a sudden started exhibiting behavior that was abusive of acting out of, of norm, I'm not going to leave him. I'm not going to divorce him. I'm going to find out what's going on with my husband. Now, if the abuse was towards me and something happened and he's abusing me, I'm not going to stay in the same house with him. I'm definitely going to separate, but he's still a person. I still need to know what men, men this man are one. We've been together 20 plus years. I'm not going to abandon him. He's still a person. I don't know what's going on with him. I don't have all the answers, but I'm not going to leave him. I'm going to be like, yeah, you going over there because abuse is not acceptable by any means. Fork, knife, smacking, cussing, you know, even disrespect. But I'm not going to leave him lead. I'm just telling you, I'm not going to run away and act like I didn't spend the last 20 plus years of my life with this man and we're not one. I don't even know if I could leave him that way. But I'm not going to live in the house with him anymore. I have to protect myself. God didn't tell you to be a fool. So you're not living in the house, but you're saying you're not leaving him. Or is this just divorcing. semantic? Okay. Divorcing. divorcing. So you're going you're gonna to move out and live separate lives, but you're just not going to divorce. When you say live separate lives, I'm not sure exactly what that looks like either. But he's still going to be a part of my life, but I'm not going to subject myself to abuse. I need to figure out what is going on with this man that I married and been with over 20 years. And that's that's what my relationship with my creator has told me I needed to do in marriage. Now, going back to the contractual, you know, that, uh, you know, he cheated. She spent all the money. She did something really silly. And, and now we got a divorce. That's what that looks like to me. And I'm just doing what else, too, because I don't know. You know, I don't have any outstanding examples. I know you would. But just a little bit of nothing. We couldn't agree. Like you said, she woke up one morning and decided to leave for what? She wasn't happy. That's a marriage that has no foundation. Mm -hmm. That's not what I'm talking about. That's a contractual marriage. It has no foundation. And the least little thing happens. We're out. We don't know relationship. We're just out because we weren't happy, we weren't satisfied. I didn't get to go shopping. 
he doesn't do this anymore. She doesn't do that anymore. Whatever. She doesn't look the same. Those type things. To me, that's contractual. There's no foundation there. And there definitely is a difference whether, you know, we're calling them one thing or another. There's a difference. So, but abuse is not acceptable. I want you to know that I'm saying that and please don't understand. I mean that abuse is not acceptable in any way, but I don't divorce my husband um, because of that. I have to separate myself and figure out what is going on with my husband because he's still my husband, because that's what marriage is supposed to be about becoming one. But if you don't believe that, then you won't. No, I hear you. Everybody, everybody, it's like Christianity. You know, everybody has the form of Christianity that they that that they espouse and that they live, you know, even though they're all Christians, right? Some Christians think that homosexuality is fine. Some Christians think that it's not fine. Everybody calls themselves a Christian who believes in the Christian faith, you know, but it's not identical to each person. So yeah, some some people are just, yeah. <laughs> I, mean, I don't know. Yeah, I, yeah, I, I couldn't if 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 I got stabbed with a knife, I, I would I would be out. But again, you know, maybe I don't think in terms of a covenant marriage. You know, if you're marrying under under God, and maybe you're just saying that you're just not going to divorce. Yeah, right. Not going to divorce. You know, there's some other things that go into that too. But you got to protect yourself. So don't don't take it the wrong way. You definitely need to protect yourself. If, if your man, all of my, your woman, all of a sudden start acting out and possessed by something and she's coming in there with knives and forks or whatever to harm you, there's an issue. You don't need to stay in that situation, but I don't know if divorce is the answer. And I don't I'm, know if I'm you're still staying ever... married to the person who tried to take my life. Like I'm being victimized every day by being legally shackled to the person who tried to take my life. And you're saying that that's what the creator wants. That's pleasing to the creator. Like, don't divorce myself. Don't, don't leak. Like I can physically separate myself from this person, but not legally. Like. They might not be something you can understand, but you, there's something wrong with that person. Wouldn't you say that's not. There's something wrong with most people. Like this is what you guys don't know. You guys think that most people are normal. They're not. People flip out all the time, all the time. Listen, you've been married a long time, right? And I've never met you. I promise you, you flipped out in your marriage. I promise you, you have. People <laughs> flip out. I mean, right? Mm -hmm. So it's like now we're just talking about the degrees, but it just doesn't make sense to me to say, okay, I'm going to separate myself physically, but not separate myself legally. And I'm going to be tied legally to the man that tried to take my life. Like, I don't, I don't, and I don't see how that's healthy for your children either. Your children saw you get stabbed with a knife, but then you don't legally separate yourself from that man. It doesn't make sense to me. But again, everybody has their own religious beliefs and no one's religious belief is really up for, for judgment. You know, so I, I get it. I get it. It's, it's, these are, well, you added a lot of things, too, but I, I would say real if, things. I swear to no, God, you I, guys I don't know. I'm not taking from it, but all of that needs to be dealt with. All but I'm asking you, how how you how do you deal with them? You're just saying I'm going to separate myself from them. But how? Like, why would you not separate? A, a man tried to kill you. Your husband tried to stab you in front of your two kids, and you're going to move the two kids out. But then you're not going to legally divorce him. You're going to stay with him, married, shackled to him legally. Now it's like okay, <laughs> okay. The answer to that is you added two kids. And you added yeah. some other things. I'm gonna get counseling and help for everybody. I'm gonna get counseling and help for everybody. What am I? What am? What? What am I gaining to just to run out and divorce this man? What is you're the plus showing that your children don't have to put up with that in their relationship? Okay, you're so showing you're, that this is a bad thing. This so is you're bad. Saying mm -hmm. it, you're saying it as though it was something that maybe I'm saying to you that my husband would be out of control. This is a mental problem. You're saying it to me as though this was a choice that he, something he chose to do. It sounds like it's a choice from your end. And I'm saying to you, this is my husband and, and it's, a, it's an issue. This is not this man. This is not his behavior. This is not normal. Something's wrong with him. But coming from you, it almost seems like it was a choice that he made to do on this particular day. And he's in control of this behavior. And it's just something he chose to do. So we're talking about maybe two. I'm seeing it totally different than what you're seeing. But I hear and agree with what you're saying, but I'm getting everybody help. This is I'm not going to walk away. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to run away from that situation as though I don't know this man anymore. And, you know, it's you know, and now, again, 
Stay it's with them. You listen, listen. All black women stay with these men and be like, I don't, I don't know what to tell you. Like, I don't. <laughs> maybe this is a good thing. I don't know. I don't think it's a black thing. All right, white women stay. All women stay with men. <laughs> I don't know what it is. <laughs> I thought the majority. I just said black women because I assume the, the the demographics of your channel are mostly black. So I assume that the audience is mostly black. However, yeah, if all women stay with these men, I suppose. No, I mean, you know, I don't know, but you they can make the decision on what to do. I was just telling you the difference. I'm just I just wouldn't run out on a man that I've been married with 20 years that had an issue or has has a problem. It's different. Fair I enough. wouldn't marry this man either. You know, if this if this was a situation coming in, that is totally different. But again, we've, we've we've been there long enough. But let's take a quick break and let's do these super chats really quick. And then I have another a couple more questions for you if it's okay yeah yeah yeah. yeah. okay square biz thank you so much for your nine dollar nine nine cents super chat shout out to the beautiful square biz awesome content creator in and of herself thank you um scam likely scam how you doing one of my altered youtube altered egos is the lead public defender lead have you ever seen him do his one of his uh have you seen this he does skits Mm -mm. and he's saying he plays you as one of your one of his uh one of his alter egos. Oh, is really? Your, That's what's uh, up. Shout out to the scam, good. likely. I am the attorney for the what the troll, uh, the troll of my troll. Welcome, <laughs> troll of <laughs> Monty, Illuminati. <laughs> oh, he wow. does good, Mr. Moose. Mr. Mustachio. Mr. Let me hit it one time for Mr. Mustachio. <laughs> excellent, excellent brother, man. Support so many content creators one of my biggest supporters always comes in just so heavy-handed not only supports me but supports so many other uh content creators both male and female in this men-centric space really really one of the strongest brothers out here uh encouraging and showing love to to us youtubers excellent excellent brother Thank you so much for, for your support. It says if TLA vouches for you, then I reckon, I reckon, uh-oh, I reckon <laughs> you're all right. Interested to see how you handle your content. Thank you so much for being here. And thank you for your super chat. Um, Luke Casely, thank you so much for your $5 super sticker. It's so good to see you always. Thank you for being here. Yeah, now, the list, awesome. the, mm-hmm. yeah, you got something you call her. What do you call Luke Casely? Oh, she's my number one smooth cat, right? Smooth cat. Which, <laughs> you know, talking about um, this is actually this is this this is a point that I was making when you talked about the beef. Like uh, Tasha K said that you know I only like smooth cats, or I only like the 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 the, the white women and the, the the white cats and the and the, and the Asian cats, the ones that are smooth, not okay. the the cats of the black women, which are. She didn't say what the <laughs> she didn't say what those were. She okay. just said the white women's cat was smooth. You know, the Asian women cats was she didn't say nothing about the black women. So I don't know oh, what she's gonna say about that. But that's me using beef and turning it for my own purposes for my own content. I see what you're saying. I see what you're saying. Black Man Unfiltered, thank you so much for your five dollars super chat. Let's get it. Always supporting the lead and Shug. Thank you so much, Black Man. Uh, Sentinel G, man, I got to watch this from the beginning. Been working on chores all day. TLA, TLA on the live with a beautiful brown g- goddess. Thank you, Tasha K. Would be proud you're supporting our <laughs> Thundercat. Maybe he got the go, Thundercats. <laughs> yes, <laughs> the Thundercats. Absolutely, Lee's, absolutely. Please <laughs> joke, subscribe. Uh, subscribe to the channel. Thank you so much. Thank you yeah, so much. Yeah, shout out to Centennial G. Also, one of these strong brothers, a huge, huge supporter of mine, and supports so many uh, content creators, both male and female, in this space. Just a, a just a huge stalwart of the of, of the men centric space here. Shout out to Centennial G. Wow, thank you so much for this support, Lee. You bring them out. I appreciate you. Yeah. Uh, Felicia says the lead attorney in the building. Yeah. Shout out to Felicia H. Right. We know what the H stands for. Shout out to our girl Felicia. Also a huge supporter of us. She is excellent. Thank you so much for your nine dollar nine nine cents super chat. Hink, Hink, you in the basement. Thank you so much for your five dollars super chat. He says, "Good afternoon, SBTLA. Can I press charges for a verbal assault? <laughs> Whoa, can I press <laughs> charges for a verbal assault I took last week on the little peeps? <laughs> They're tough over there, oh, but I've been no. over there a few times. They are tough. Shout out to Hink. Hink, you silly. 
Barry Hamilton, thank you so much for your $4.49 super sticker. Mr. Beatty, Mr. Charles Beatty, thank you so much for your $10 super chat. I think the solution is biblical, not traditional marriage. This includes polygamy, which God regulates according to scripture throughout the whole of the Bible, of the body, excuse me, whole of the body. Oh, wait a minute before we go. Um, Dapper Gents, thank you so much for your $10 super chase. It's just love of the game. Thank Shout you. out to Dapper Gents. Yes, a uh, huge supporter of it as well. Shout out to Dapper Gents. All right. Now, was that all? Okay, so we're going to get back into it. So, all right, Lee. Now, we're done with that. I just want, because I know you, you're going to be using me. So, I'll make sure you understand. Everybody understands. <laughs> <laughs> Domestic violence is not acceptable. No, I'm not going to clip you. I, I do be clipping <laughs> these white boys, but I ain't going to clip you. Come on now. Come on now. I ain't going to do that. I ain't going to do that. You, know, you have to put that extra thing on the end of it because people will take what you say. I'm not saying you do it, but I have had this happen before. Somebody say one thing and they'll take that. You see how she's in it? And they won't put, play no more front and back. I'm like, wow, how did they make that happen? So anyway, but thank you for that. So we're going to keep it going now. We talked about marriages. Let's talk about divorce. Because um, earlier you mentioned a couple things. You got into this business because there's a couple things you wanted to say to men to make their life a little more simple. And maybe so they wouldn't have to see you, I'm assuming. Right? Yeah. What would you tell them about divorce? Uh, it's probably going to happen. It's probably going to happen. You know, if if you get married, you know, what do they say? It's about 50-50 in terms of, of whether you get divorced or not. But then if you're in the 50% that is not divorced, so you're in the 50% that's married, so many of these marriages are not healthy marriages. They're not happy marriages. They're not successful marriages. They're toxic marriages. People in there, particularly the men, are suffering. So if you just split that in half and say, okay, well, if I get married, there's a 50% chance I'm going to get divorced. And if I stay together, we'll split that. So then there's a 25% chance that I'm happily married, 25% chance that I'm unhappily married. Then you only got 20 if you get if i get married today i only have a 25% chance of being happily married now anybody'll tell you that's not really great odds it's really not great odds so you need to go in to the institution of marriage knowing that it's probably not going to work out for you yeah. um yeah listen if if you got a 75% chance of your house burning down probably not going to work out for your house. Yeah. Now, if it's a beautiful house and you love your house and you know you custom design it, what are you going to want to do? You're going to want to protect it, right? If there's a 75% chance it's going to get burned down, what's the first thing you're going to do? You're going to get insurance on it, right? It's the first thing you should do if you're going to get married and knowing there's a 75% chance that it's not going to work out the way that you want, right? Get a prenup, right? What's wrong with a prenup? And try to try to protect yourself against some of the crazy things that can happen when you are uh, in front of these judges and you don't have any protection. You're just exposed. Right. Um, so get a prenup and then, you know, you need to decide whether you want to have these kids or not. Because that's a whole nother thing. But, you know, prenups really don't account for kids. So it's not like you can put in the prenup, well, if we get divorced in 10 years, you know, it's going to be 50-50 custody. All right, judges don't have to abide by that. So if you got these kids, you need to understand that the vast majority of these uh, of the topics relating to these kids is going to fall outside the prenup. What does that mean? It means you're not going to be protected. It means that, you know, currently still in the vast majority of these states, there's a preference for mothers, there's a preference for women. So, you know, all these guys talking about they want to leave a legacy and all that, that's good. And there's a there's a chance that you can have two kids and throughout those two kids' life, you live in the same house with those two kids if you're a man. There's a chance that it's a lot of fathers who raise their kids from zero to 18. There are millions of fathers who haven't. There's millions of fathers who, you know, this woman for one reason or another, some good reasons, some bad reasons, but they've snapped their fingers and gotten a divorce and took those kids. And now this guy has got, you know, visitation every other weekend from Friday at six to Sunday at six. He's got a little Wednesday dinner from six to eight. 
But is that what he really envisioned when he was having those kids, when he was having his legacy? Did his legacy involve the concept of visitation with his own kids? Probably not. Mm-hmm. Right. These are things that men need to think about because it's either possible or probable that they will be dealing with these issues. Um, and so many men, it's like, oh, I love her. You know, she's got titties. And it's like, okay, I want to marry her. Well, like, you haven't really thought this thing through. Right. And to speak to someone like me, it costs hundreds of dollars an hour. And right. it's like, you know what? I'm just going to make a YouTube channel and start talking to you brothers about this for free. You only got to pay me nothing, man. But just don't, don't mess your lives up over some silly stuff. So uh, the main thing about divorce is that if if a man is going to get married, he needs to be realistic. He needs to understand that he's probably not as special as he thinks he is. And, you know, most of the men in the country aren't, you know, he's not way better than most of the men in this country. And if most of the men in this country get married and they got a 50-50 shot, he's probably got a 50-50 shot too. And then if he stays marriage and there's a 50-50 shot that that marriage is happy or unhappy, then he probably has that same shot too. <laughs> so just being realistic. There's a lot of, you know, a lot of things we could talk about, but that's really the number one thing. Just be realistic. All right. right. But, you know, if you're 26 years old and you've never been exposed to this stuff, you just, oh, she's got these big areolas. I'm in love. And it's like, you're not even thinking, you know, you're not. You're not even doing the the necessary stuff. And a lot of times it's not even their fault. You know, if you're 24 years old and you get married, it's not really your fault if you haven't heard of this stuff, right? It's not, if, 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 if I try to convert someone to Christianity and they reject it, that's one thing. But, you know, if a child dies at four months old, you know, I, it's mm-hmm. just like, oh, he wasn't a Christian. It's like, it's not really his fault. <laughs> you know, he couldn't talk. So, you know, a lot of a lot of young men coming up, especially in this environment where it's so, you know, pro-woman, anti-toxic masculinity, whatever the hell that is, you know, and you you just these men, they're 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 living in fantasy land. And, you know, they don't a lot of these men don't have older men to pull them to the side and say, hey, man, mm-hmm. let me tell you. And even the men that do, you know, if you got an uncle, if I'm an uncle, I pull somebody aside and I say, hey, man, I got married and that lady was crazy. That 23 year old, oh, well, that's that's auntie. That's that your fault. You chose the wrong one. Right. Because it's only one one data point. But what if that same 23 year old could talk to a black man who's seen thousands of cases? Then you can't say, oh, well, it's just you married that crazy lady. You can't just discount it so easily. Right. That's my value to the space. Like I've seen it all. And not only have I seen it all and dealt with it all, the majority of my friends are attorneys. Right. And we talk about, I talk about their cases. Right. And it's like the stuff that goes on behind closed doors, you guys would have no idea. You guys are thinking that, oh, there's a normal life, a normal marriage. Everything is so crazy. But yeah, so that's, that's, that's my number one thing. And, you know, there's certainly a thousand things I could talk to these brothers about divorce. But the number one thing, Pimp, you got to be realistic. If 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 you're not realistic, you're setting yourself up for failure. You know what, Lee? Um, we definitely appreciate you, and knowledge is definitely very powerful, and I agree with that. But what I don't agree with is I am definitely a marriage advocate, and I feel like you create your own reality. Um, just because fifty other percent of the people did it, don't mean I need to do it. Um, matter, matter of fact, it's going to make me ha- work harder not to be in that number. Um, and you're right about a lot of things, and it's that people don't know how to be married. Um, they don't have no idea how to pick their wives or husbands or what vice versa. They have no idea. Matter of fact, you're right. They like the areolas, but she, her mind is nothing, or she looks and acts like nothing. And I did pick her, and I made a mistake. But we can't blame marriage for that. That was them. Marriage is still the institution that has worked for centuries. It's just the people that are involved that are not putting in the work. But I agree with you, knowing and having the knowledge of me making uh, possibly making that mistake or falling into the people that didn't put in the work or refused to put in the work. I just wasn't happy because we hear that all the time. I just wasn't happy. Mm-hmm. Having that knowledge that you're giving Foster prenup is outstanding. And I agree with that in those terms. 
And I also agree with you when you said being intentional about these kids. Oh my God, we got to be intentional about the kids. Actually, I might even tell people don't even have any because the world that we're in right now is ridiculous. Fine. Gosh, these kids are suffering so much. So I'm I'm there with you and I'm agreeing totally. But we definitely have to say that, but we already know most of them that are not slowing down, not being um, intentional about who their women are, who they're picking as wives. They go in and she's going in pregnant a lot of times. So then we add into the stress of a marriage that didn't have a foundation initially anyway. So you're right. We definitely need that knowledge because they're definitely probably going to come and see you. So I'm always trying to talk to the ones on the on, you know, pre marriage, you know, to let yes. them know what it actually entails instead of like getting into it, and then now you got to go see lead and now you're broken, you know. Mm -hmm. So I definitely agree with what you're saying, but I'm not about the divorce thing. You know, I just say, yeah, we established that you are not about divorce. If no. there's one thing we established, it is I'm that not SB is not about divorce. No, not about divorce. <laughs> And I am pro-marriage, but I definitely believe in what you're saying. We need to have knowledge of what we're getting into and hearing your stories that you have seen and seen walk out are very important because we can probably always point those back to where they went wrong or what they didn't do. You know, this person, this girl was doing this prior. She was getting high prior. She was on crack prior. She was a prostitute prior. All that stuff was probably into play before they married her. But it's like you said, they overlooked it, got married. And, you know, she looked good. And here we go. Now she's not a wife. You know, these things happen. So um, I think I'm definitely going to add that part about the prenup and always be intentional. It's definitely going to be something that I'm adding. But the marriage piece, I'm always push it. I'm always pushing. And I, I wouldn't say to somebody, um, it's probably not going to work. What now, do you I'm not mean when it. you say you always push it? What does that mean? Marriage. I just think a woman should always be, I think people, I think that was one of the purposes that we were built for, made for, is for each other. I think we were supposed to be fruitful and multiply. I think a woman should always be covered by a man. If it's not her father, it should be her husband. Now, if they don't want to be married, their job is still to be fruitful. And to be fruitful is to spread the word of your creator. You know, you're not just supposed to be here breathing air. You know, that's not what you're supposed to do. That's not our purpose. And our purpose has nothing to do with the job or career that we choose, because you can do anything you want. You still supposed to have those things you're supposed to be doing while you're doing that also. So I know a lot of people get caught up like, you know, in their purpose being, oh, I got to be an attorney. I'm not talking about you particularly, but and you could be. But even in that, I should see a certain thing in you and whatever that is, it should be you're fruitful and you're multiplying, multiplying, meaning that you're having children. And if we're not doing that, we're pr really not doing what we're supposed to do. We're really not, you know. Fulfilling the purpose of us being here. So what what percentage of women do you think should get married? I have no idea. I have no idea because you have people that are that there's been there's numbers of women, women and men, if we want to go that far, that their purpose is not to do that, and they have they. I don't know how that's decided, so please don't ask that question. I have no idea. But if it's something that they want, it to seems do, to me like since you were saying you're pro marriage and you're pushing marriage, it mm -hmm. seems to me that you should know who you're pushing it to and who you're not pushing it to. The reason why I don't know that is because a lot of women, when you approach it that way, they will tell you they don't want to be married or because they've had bad relationships or what have you. Um, I happen to think that a woman, most women want to have companionship, but they don't have a good um, idea of what good companionship looks like. So they were always resisted instead of them being open-minded to how to have that or preparing themselves for that, they were always resisted. So instead of me working on the woman being resistant, I would just like to work on the woman being the best version of herself. And then maybe it will come and hopefully, hopefully she'll be open to receiving it. Now that may not be every woman. It may be some women out here again that say they're good without having a mate. I don't know that. But as long as women are coming to me and saying, hey, hey I want to be a wife, I, I understand that this, this, what I'm doing now is not good for me. I, I, I no longer want to be a feminist. I, I don't think I'm a man's equal. I, I want to be in my feminine. I, I want to do this. I want to do that. Then I'm going to have to always say, OK, look, this is what I think. This is how we should do this. This is what I did. I'm going to be the example. Now, if you don't want this, then, hey, I understand that, too. But again, I just think that women work better being in their feminine, considering they have to be here in this world and and go on their day to day work and taking care of themselves as an adult, as adults. And if they have children, that's even worse. Or I should say it's even more so that they should be covered. 
That's not something that we should be doing. It doesn't benefit the kids. It doesn't benefit the woman. And the, the father of the child, he may be getting blocked out. Well, who knows the situation on that end? So I'm always pushing for that type of relationship to happen so we can get back to the nuclear family, if nothing else, co-parenting to have the best relationships possible for the children if we've found ourselves in that type of situation. So okay. I hope I answered your question, but I don't, I didn't, I have not done any percentages. I don't even really know the question to actually ask to, to cover that, that percentage to say, mm -hmm. you know, I don't know if someone's act, went out there and said to a woman, do you want to be married? Do you want to be married? And how many of them would actually say that, you know, we got this war going on right now. Women have no idea what they want to do. Mm -hmm. They don't say they don't, you know, we fickle sometimes, you know, we're women. We're emotional. <laughs> well, you can say it. I can't say that, but you can oh, say God. it. <laughs> Days, you know, listen, I said, Cleed is so funny. I said, we're going on happiness. What? I'm happy sometimes when my husband cleans my car, but if he don't clean it, I'm unhappy. We can't base our life on happiness. Right. I mean, that's just, that's not what that's we do. so true. That's right. So, true. so, listen, someone in the comments said, you say, say, as me talking nonsense, uh, listen, I'm really not. I'm talking 27 years of being married and doing the work. I really am. And, wow. um, you know, lead is on the other side of me and he has his own story also, but I'm telling you, it could work, but you have to work it. Dearly beloved. You have to work it. So, but listen, lead, I got one more question yeah. and I am going to let you go. You have been outstanding. You have been here with me an hour and 15 minutes. And I hope the conversation has been good for you because it's been very good to me. Yeah, no problem. If you wanted to drop the link, if people have questions or something. Oh, yeah, okay. no I didn't ask, I didn't ask you prior, so I didn't want to. <laughs> put you in yeah, a, in that's a no problem. Okay, okay. With well, this last question, though, this is this is a hot number here. It's child support, and I know you've had a lot of this. But what would you tell the men um, going into this situation? That one thing, if you had, I don't know if you offered any advice about this either to keep them out of this system. But if you would have something, what would you tell them? Mm, well, about child support. Yeah, well, you know, you mentioned you said there was a couple of things that you could tell men prior. Yeah. I, I, don't, I don't know if child support was one of those things you would advise on anyway. But now, after all these years of it being here and all the terrible stories we hear about it, and I know a lot of them. I mean, I pay child support for a lot of men myself. Um, and I've seen it. You know, I, I pay a four dollar a month child support. I, I would love to get that. <laughs> Um, and it, it kind of upset, you know, upset because they like they had rules and regulations. I was like, well, can I just send you six months worth? That's like, no, we actually got to get two dollars every two weeks. And That's I'm like, crazy. yeah, it's the, not my child support. <laughs> the, the child support system is insane. You know, like fathers hate it. And a lot of times mothers hate it. Mothers sued child support back in the day. It's a clash action trying to sue child support. Like the child support catches it from both sides. And they don't give a damn because they're the government anyway. So it's, it's not a great situation. You know, one of the biggest things is just guys have to understand that mm, you're creating about a 20-year obligation, right? And it's just you don't appreciate that when you're in that box and it's so warm and she just, it's all rhythmic and she throwing it back. You just, I've been there. Listen, listen you know, I ain't, uh, I ain't no saint. I just been lucky. <laughs> all right. I just been lucky. Um, you don't appreciate what 20 years of payments really looks like. Mm. And that's, you know, just for one kid. Right. But now you stack on two kids and, you know, a dirty little secret that men don't know is that, you know, men get tricked into having that second kid or that third kid. It's a lot of men out here walking around with three kids when they really only wanted one, right? But they got married, tried to do the right thing, got the one kid, and now the kid's eight years old. And, you know, they got disagreement. Okay, this is the one kid. Yeah, baby, this is the one kid. Kid turns eight, mom goes to the damn mall and sees some baby. Oh, the baby was so cute. And the dad like, yeah, but I told you this is one kid. And you're like, okay, that's what you said. Three months later, she walked in with that goddamn stick talking about, we're <laughs> pregnant. And like, ah, and ah. <laughs> they, you know, and it happens to so many men. Men will never, they'll, they'll tell me. They will not tell you. They will not tell, you know, the guys at the gym. They won't tell their nephews. 
so many men have more kids than they really want from the woman that they love. Wow. Right. And that's, that's, that's child support. <laughs> right? there is, there's yeah. so many things that go on in a marriage that just no one talks about. You're right. Um, you know, it's, and there's no way to protect yourself from child support the same way you can protect your assets in a, in a prenup. Right. There's no right. paperwork, no documents, nothing that can be signed. And so the second that your sperm leaves your body, man, you just have no control. And no matter if she says that she don't want kids or that, you know, she's fine with aborting, just like you said, you know, SB, you know, women's feelings can change, you know, and she can agree to you that, you know, y'all ain't going to have that second kid. And then four years later, you got one and a half more coming. And, it's, um, and yeah. it's all these 18, 20, 21 year obligations. And it's so, it can be so much, you know, especially for men who got something going on. Because I promise you, you were paying the $4 a month in child support. The man that owed that $4 a month, he didn't really have a lot going on. No, because if if I went to court over child support and I asked for four dollars, that judge would he probably put me in jail for saying something so stupid because he's going to get some money out of me. Right. So it's like the better that you do, the harder that you work, you get penalized by having to pay even more. And you can pay a, an amount of child support where it's not even child support anymore. It's really alimony to the wife. Absolutely. Right? Especially if you got multiple kids. Right. So, uh, I mean, I could have a long discussion with, with young brothers about this. They just do not understand the, the real, what really happens in these marriages with regard to these children and child support and how nobody's going to listen to them. You know, they're trying to work overtime to support their kids. They've been working overtime for two years. Then the mom finds somebody else, divorces him. And then the judge wants to set a higher rate of child support based on the overtime that he was working. And he's going to go to the judge and say, well, you know, it was just overtime, you know, but it wasn't guaranteed. I don't want to be a slave. I was working overtime for her. Now she's getting new dick. I don't want to work overtime. Like that was, that was costing me. Like it's my time. It's my life. So if you put my child support number at the overtime number, it's going to force me to keep working overtime for 18 years. Absolutely. And the judge is going to say, well, that's what you signed up for. And you're going to say, well, no, well, overtime isn't guaranteed. And the judge will say, well, have you been having it the last two years? Well, yeah, well, well, that's what we're going to do. And now for 16 years, you are a slave. It's 16 years a slave. Right? You have to keep working overtime. This is what this is what guys don't realize. It's so much stuff that men don't understand, All right? And I get it, man. I'm a sucker for areolas too, but it's like, you have no idea. <laughs> you have no I idea. Like, I like what you said though. Once the sperm leaves your body, you don't have any control over it. I like yeah. that. That's something to something to say. So listen, guys, we are camera only tonight. Um, and Bruiser, thank you so much for being here. We're going to bring you up in just a moment. We're going to read these super chats and we're going to get right into it, okay? Thank you. Let's see. It's Bruiser. <laughs> TLA, what's up, my guy? I've got to talk to you. Oh, he's here now to talk to you about an idea how to decrease the rate of fatherless households. Thank you, Bruiser. And you'll be here coming up in just one second. Sir Chai, thank you so much for your $2 super chat. Learning a lot about prenups. Thank you for this lesson. Thank you, Sir Chai. And Mama Bear Moments. Thank you. Um, shout out to Mama Bear Moments. She's awesome. Okay. Thank you, Mama Bear, for the $10 super chat. He says, she says, marriage like motherhood is not for everyone. We need to be honest about the institution of marriage and make sure people are properly educated on what it entails. Coming from a wife and mom, Mama Bear, I love that. You are so right. Thanks. Very unlikely. Thank you. Thank you for your four dollars nine. Yo, excuse me, your $9.99 super chat. It's good to see you too. Uh, he says, salute. Great points to both of you. People definitely need to take self inventory before marriage to see if it's for you. Example, alcoholics should stay away from bars. <laughs> yeah. Shout out to Perry right. Unlikely. Perry, 
a high value man married to a high value woman. She's beautiful. They got a couple of kids, man. Mm -hmm. Pierre's doing his thing. So um, THPP Network, thank you so much for your $4.99 super chat. Got to support, hold on for one moment. Got to support the home team. What's up, lead? Um, lead, like SB, she reminds me of my family in Texas. Solid, earned a sub. Thank you so much for that. Oh, but listen, oh, um, it's one super chat that we are missing from uh, Randy K. Can you go back and pull it out for me? You'll find it. Zaylin, thank you so much for your $1.99 super chat. And it is, what about sperm donors? Hmm. They are they're there. there. <laughs> they're out there. But listen, for now, uh, we got one more super chat from Randy K that I think we missed. We're going to bring that up. And Miss Randy, thank you so much for your super chat. We'll read that in just a moment. But for now, we're going to go to Bruiser. Bruiser, what's that question? And hey, how you how's going? What's going on, TLA? What's going on, Security Boss? Salute, <laughs> Bruiser. How are you? Salute, my brother. Um, the, the conversation I want to have with you is, is I'm, I'm going to do that another time. That's going to require me to to make a payment and contribution to support you because that's going to be a, a very drawn out discussion. But since I'm here, I just wanted to say, I know you asked a question to a uh, security boss about when she says she pushed for marriage. And I would say I, I would, I'm pushed for marriage too, because I talk to a lot of brothers on my uh, channel and um, I promote marriage to, you know, all women who, and men who desire to have children and are having sex unprotected. Uh, not to say that it's for everybody, but I would say anybody who's out here having sex unprotected or desire to have children, 100% of that, you know, sample should get married. 100% of people who want kids should be married? Yes, for the sake of the children. I, I firmly believe that uh, the kids do better in a dual parent household. More, more importantly, a, fa a household with a father. Given the circumstances in the society and the community, and uh, kid, uh, kid, children being twenty more times likely to be incarcerated, uh, suicide rate, homelessness, childhood trauma, uh, and all those other things that happen when the father is removed from the household. I have my own little thoughts on it, and I, I don't want to put that on this channel, but I, I, I firmly believe there's an agenda on why it's unfair uh, as far as uh, custody battles. I think it's a uh, revenue to be to be gained by the court systems and society as a whole by removing the father. Uh, I think there's some type of revenue that comes in as far as uh, prison industrial complex and all sorts of other things. I think if you if you improve on a nuclear family, uh, there's other matters or other organizations that's going to take a financial hit uh, when the father is in the household because of, you know, these kids are doing well. And then these other things that's flourishing from their demise tend to lose revenue. If you can see where I'm going with that. Okay. That's deep. That's deep. <laughs> <laughs> and I watch, I watch you and Ruzline, man. And, uh, I was on One Brothers Live and he kept telling me uh, how you were like, they had this whole bias look at it. But I'm glad I actually went and watched the video because when you're pouring out these stats and statistics, but you don't know the context behind the numbers, Fox. you really get a, a skewed look at it. And when you when you stated that as far as custody and child support, the fact that it's actually making it in front of a judge, that means that the father has a good chance of winning that, that case. It's saying that 99, 90% of them don't even come coming from the judge means the father is not even trying. It's, I, 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 I just let that blow past me. I was like, I know that that's no way that can't be true. I got to go watch this whole video. <laughs> yeah, you, but, uh, you get that. Ruslan, for some reason, just could not understand what, 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 what you just said. I don't know why he couldn't understand it, but he just, it just wasn't entering in his head. Well, well I, think, I think what's happening here is when you become a content creator, and you become an influencer, you kind of get stuck in what you've already pushed, even though you believe the the contrary. It's almost like in order to be loyal to your, your fan base, you got to stay with maybe a, perhaps something that you think has been debunked, sadly, mm. just for the sake of not uh, having that consistency among your subscribers and losing your followers. Sort of like with uh, Hafiz, I, I believe. Uh, mm. When you when he, he was... He, 
one one would guess that he was like red pill and he was all about you know all these other things and then he started he got into marriage now he's kind of switched up and now it's like okay his consistency is gone and i don't i don't want to sh- you know talk about anybody behind it back but I, I remember you and him had a conversation about that and trying to figure out how you guys could come together and somehow you know have a discussion but yeah, we I, never had a conversation. Me and Hafiz never had a conversation about, you know, him coming, him being on my show after the whole thing with Pearl and everything. We did talk before then, it's just one phone call, but that was way before. But he's been ducking me. He doesn't want to. He doesn't want to talk to me for some reason. <laughs> I don't know why. I'm nice, right? It's be aren't I nice? I don't understand why people wouldn't want to talk to me. I don't know. I, know, I think you're very nice, actually. And, and yeah. you know, you're very helpful too. So I don't know. You know what? I think sometimes we don't want to um don't want to disappoint. You know what I mean? Like mm. we want we want everything to be good. We don't want to disagree. You know, we don't want we're not strong enough in our points to actually verbalize a point. And you're very smart, you know that. And I think sometimes it could be, you know, intimidating for some. Especially if they don't believe in their point enough, <laughs> you know, if they're not solid in their point, you could persuade them. Like right now, if I wasn't solid in being married, I would be getting a divorce. You know? <laughs> <laughs> listen, listen, I don't, I don't want that for I'm anybody. <laughs> That's funny. I'm just kidding, yeah. I mean, you know, I'm just kidding though. No, no, but, you're um, right. The, yeah, I think that's what it is. But uh, I know what you're talking about, Ruza, because um, he does get a lot of pushback for where he is now. I didn't hear him before, so I don't have anything to compare it to. But now he's all about being married. And, I, and I'm assuming once before it was more of a manosphere. Am I right about that? Yeah, he he he's, he he doesn't claim to be red pill or anything like that. He, he Right now he's claimed more to help men. I think as far as marriage, I think, because now he's married mm-hmm, and mm-hmm. I don't even think he's been married long enough to, to have the influence that he's, he's saying that he have on men as a whole. I've been married almost a decade, but I'm not going around here saying, Oh, I got the, the, the mojo to, to being able to stay in marriage. I mean, I know something. The only thing I can tell brothers right now today is to get either a prenuptial agreement. And if you ain't already got one to get a postnuptial agreement, because, I'm, you know, obviously I listen to lead attorney a lot. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's your only protection. Right. Uh, and my question to you, uh, TLA, is there any other, like, uh, is there anything going on as far as policies in, in society, as far as trying to, to even a playing field when it comes to child custody battles? Or is this something we can look forward to from the, in the future, like f- from here on out? Yeah, it just depends state to state. I know in Atlanta, they started this new policy kind of last year. In, well, let me not say Atlanta. Let me say in Georgia, in certain counties in Georgia, to really kind of go default 50-50, which is exactly what should happen. Uh, so that's only in certain counties, and that's only in the state of Georgia that I'm talking about. You know, they say, you know, default 50-50, supposedly in Florida, supposedly in California. Some states don't have that. So, you know, each state moves independently and at its own speed. But, you know, it's 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 hard to say things could get worse, right? So because yeah. we're kind of at the bottom. So any little change is probably gonna help us out. Well, I'm glad I moved to, to Georgia because I, I, I was I was married and I had my first child in virginia uh i don't know if that i, I gotta play by the rules from the state i came from or is it like no, if you if you live in georgia uh at least for six months and your your residency is here you're domiciled here then if you get divorced it would be under georgia law uh regardless of where what state you got married in cool so you'd be good yeah all right i sure appreciate you having me up security boss i know you got other callers but uh i'll see y'all on the next one man Thanks, Bruiser. So listen, um, we got a couple of more super chats that we got to do. We had Randy K and also uh, Mr. Boss is the one for sugar, sugar curls, I think, that we need to find out. So, um, but who's here for our sugar curls? And Randy. Randy K, how you doing, Randy? Thank you so much for your $9.99 super chat. says, good evening, TLA and Security Boss. Um, do you also factor... Do you also factor in the willingness to receive help? Salute to Randy, the beautiful, smooth cat. I met her uh, a few weeks ago at my meetup in San Diego. She is awesome. Shout out to her and Aileen. 
de Guanajuato, digamos. Uh, do you factor in willingness to receive help? Mm. He's saying before we leave, she's saying before we, I'm assuming she's talking about the divorce situation, the separation versus divorce, the person that was mentally ill, or if it's just something's going on with that person, do we factor in the fact that they need help or do we just leave? I think if someone is willing to get help, that's always a positive sign. Some things to me, you know, you cross the line. If you go Sarah Bobbitt, for example, and you cut my penis off, I don't care that you're willing to receive help, to be honest. You're it's exactly. not that's not gonna it's not gonna I influence me. All right. <laughs> if if you've turned my kids against me, you know, if you've put out false allegations, if you've had me arrested saying that I punched you and I never touched you, I don't really don't give a damn if you're trying to get right now. You know, you might have ruined my career. You might have ruined my reputation in the community. Right. Um, but, you know. I can agree with that. Um, Sugar Curls, thank you so much for your $10 super chat. She say, I, I am a firm believer that if a marriage fails, both parties carry responsibility. A marriage can work if both persons work at work it with a threefold cord, man, woman, and God. Sugar Curls, I love that. Thank you so much for your $10 super chat. And Mr. Clement, great. Clement, how you doing tonight? It's good to see you. Thank you so much for your $5 super chat. Hink, that is what you get when you, what? Are you going back at it, Hink? That is what you get when you keep telling these hyenas you will eat their groceries. Oh, Clement, you ain't supposed to do that. We got company. <laughs> like it's company. You're not supposed to be talking like that. <laughs> got to talk about that on Monday now. <laughs> Love oh, my wow. dryer open in the background. I'm sorry? Pedro, oh, how are you doing? I'm, I'm all right. Uh, I have a question for the lead attorney. Yes, sir. So I had a conversation with Destiny. I think it was me, Angry Man, Destiny, and somebody else, uh, Sway. So within that, now I know you specialize in custody, right? He cited an article from a Chicago Tribune in 1994 that says when fathers contest custody, they win a majority of the time. Now, is that your experience? Because I know from your channel, it's easy for somebody to say, quote unquote, fight for custody. But what goes into actually fighting for custody? Now, you dropped a video with the guy that had one of the bussing haircuts from like the younger Zoomer generation, where you told the guy that, it, that, that it's one of the most expensive court cases out there. Now, given the fact that you said that, would you say that fathers win custody a majority of the time when they contest custody? Uh, if fathers contest custody, would they win the majority of the time? Probably. But, wow. you know, I, I spoke to Ruslan about this because he's citing the same statistic. Some of you guys, not you, of course, some people cite statistics, but they don't understand the reason why, right? It takes an expert to really tell you, to explain to you guys why the statistics are how they are. So let's suppose, Patriarch, you you got a couple of kids and you've been married and you come to my office and you say that you want custody of your kids, you want to fight. In my head, I already know, and let's say this was two years ago before Georgia started making these changes. I already know that you're probably not going to get custody. Right. And to be honest, I know that, you know, that you probably aren't going to get custody because when you look around, you don't see a lot of men with custody in this motherfucker. You don't see a lot of men receiving child support, but you're angry. Uh, maybe your wife cheated on you. So you want custody. So I'm going to tell you, I'm going to say, listen, you know, here in Georgia, men typically don't get custody. Right. Uh, so you're in the hole. Now, if you've got a really good reason as to why you should win custody, then I'm ready to fight for you. You know, and we'll, we'll fight this thing out to the nth degree. But what's going to happen a lot of times is that we're going to fight and you're going to lose. Now, this is going to be a very expensive case. You know, it's nothing for this case to, you know, cost twenty five, fifty thousand, seventy five thousand dollars. You know, are you prepared to 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 go uh, to to such an extent and then lose because the debt the deck is stacked against you? I'll tell you, most men are not, and I recommend that most men 
don't fight for custody. But I keep an open mind on, on every person that comes into the office. So I'm going to say, okay, well, what's going on? Why do you think you should win custody? And you're going to say that, you know, she doesn't feed the kids a lot. And you're going to say that, you know, she doesn't make sure that the kids brush her teeth and that little Jimmy got a cavity. Right. And they don't shower as much as they should. And she went to Jamaica on that girl's trip. Shout out to Anna Allen. Right. Um, you're going to you're going to say stuff like that. And I'm going to just cut you off because, you know, you're paying for my time and I don't want to run it up. I'm going to say, listen. Is she using drugs? And you say, well, she did smoke weed that time. Is she using meth? Well, she's not using meth. OK, is she using crack cocaine? Well, she's not using crack cocaine. OK. Is, is she putting her fingers in one of the kids' anuses? Is she touching the kids? No, she's not touching the kids. Okay, was well, she beating the kids? Well, she spanked them a little bit. No, beating. Like, is there blood? Is there is there scars? Is there broken bones? No. Uh, did, did she run off with a boyfriend for three months and didn't contact you, didn't contact the kids? Did she leave the kids with you for three months? No. What about two months? Oh, she didn't do that leave. What about one month? Did she leave for one fucking month? No, oh, she'd been in the house. You know, I'd be like, well, <laughs> is she in prison? No, she's not in prison. Has she been to jail? Well, there was a suspended license. Has she been to jail in the last 36 months? No, she really hasn't been in jail. She's not in jail? No, she's not in prison? No. <laughs> what are you, how are you supposed to win? You can't win. Okay. Like the, 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 the chances of you winning are slim. Now, are you willing? If, if you tell me I'm willing to pay $75,000 to you lead to fight for my kid, I'll just tell you to get out of my office. I'm not going to take your money. Because I don't think you're going to win. Right? And I'll, I'll refer you to three other attorneys. And you'll go to them and they will tell you you're not going to win. Most of these attorneys will not take your money. In fact, it's the attorney who does accept your money. That's the dude that you need to watch out for. Because that attorney will take your money. You will pay up to $30,000. Let's say you pay the whole seventy-five, dollars And... Uh, you go to trial for two weeks and then you lose. It's like, oh, well, you know, we gave it the, the good college try. Now you're out 75 grand, right? I only take cases where I think there is a reasonable chance that we are going to win. Those are the only, I'm not going to take your fucking money because I know what happens. I've been on the other side. I've represented these women when these attorneys take money from men and I go in there and I crush them. And I'm like, what are these attorneys? How do these attorneys justify taking sixty thousand, eighty thousand from these, from these men? Okay. So naturally, if I take a case, if I take your case to trial, we got a great fucking chance of winning. And that is what the statistics are going to show. That's why the statistics are going to be elevated, because I get to pick and choose which cases I'm taking. If you've got a good case, I'm going to take your case to trial. If you've got a bad case, Lord knows that I'm, I'm not taking it. And honestly, if you've just got like a wishy-washy mediocre case, she didn't feed the kid like what you want. It's not Whole Foods. It's McDonald's. The kid's hair is long. Maybe the kid got lice. You know, your wife cheated on you with two black men and now you want to punish her and take the kids. I'm not taking your fucking case. So, so to, 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 to sum this up, the only way that it's going to happen is I have to prove that the woman is on crack, ran off for three months, and my kids are not being fed correctly. Not even the fed correctly. Like, you know, it, it's got to be something drastic. Okay. It's got to be something drastic. So the idea that most men are not attempting to fight for custody for their children what would you say to somebody that would say that? It's true, but it's false. It's true, but it's because the system isn't fair. 
if the system wasn't, if the system was fair, if it was 50 50, so many men would fight for custody. I would have a lot more money because I'd be taking more ki- more fathers' money to go to trial. I'm mm. turning away money because the system is unfair. Mm. You see what I'm saying? Like I am rejecting fathers' cases when they when they want to go to trial because I know they're gonna fucking lose, or I know the probability of them losing is high. Yeah. And I can't I can't take you know seventy five thousand dollars from a man and then knowing that he's gonna lose, and then after a week he loses. I'm like, oh, well, you know, at least we tried. Okay. Right. And so the cases reflect the inequities of the system. You know, the cases that actually go to trial, that's a case where an attorney said, no, 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 watch this, pay me. We're going to get these fucking kids. Okay. And those are the cases that are typically going to win. Okay. But it's not because men aren't fighting. If if you've got a great attorney, it's because your attorney is discouraging you from fighting if you have a mediocre case. And the mediocre cases, um, she's on fentanyl and not crack. And she fed the kids <laughs> once and not not twice. Not you, she only took one meal from them and not two times. Uh, the fed all she, might be a little something different. But yeah, it's gotta be something drastic. If there's nothing drastic, then you know, at least that's how it is in Georgia. If there's okay. nothing like drastic, something serious. Drastic might be too strong of a word. There better be something serious. Yeah, yeah. So I mean, just it's just there's this narrative that is floating out there that well, the, the child is with the woman because the woman is taking care of the kids, right? Something that was stated several times within that conversation. Not necessarily knowing that the man, there's a lot that goes into, quote unquote, fighting for your, it's just simple to say, well, did you fight for your kids? Like, what do you mean fight for your kids, exactly. right? That means that, that that's 60, 70 grand that I would have to pay to an attorney in order to get my kids, right? Yeah, and that's assuming that you had something to fight over. Most guys don't have anything to fight over. There's no, the mom isn't sufficiently terrible. So the mom has, okay, the burden of proof is always on the man, basically, right? Realistically, yes. It's never the fact that the mom has to prove that the dad is a bad father. It's never the opposite. The mom does not have to prove that the dad is a bad father. The dad has to prove that the mom is a bad mother. Okay. Yeah, no, that's, that's, uh, that's I just wanted I to get clarification on the article because I read the article when he cited it. And I even went to census statistics because I'm like, is there a database on anywhere where custody cases are decided? And who collects that information? I couldn't even find a primary source. The only thing I could find was the census data that showed how child support was distributed. And how would that even make sense if 90% of, uh, of child support payments are going to women, but then men or women, a, a majority of the cases with their children. Right. So that doesn't even make sense when that, that whoever wrote that article from the Chicago Tribune, I think it was a woman, which means it's probably biased to begin with. But um <laughs> You know, I, I don't know. Like, I, I needed more background on that. So, and there's this woman online. There's a, yeah, and there's this woman online, uh, I think that has a crush on you. I've seen her on a couple other shows. Mm-hmm. Her name is Annalicia. <laughs> and she acts like she hates secretly. You're her Hey Arnold fetish. She acts like she hates us, but I think she has a crush on you. Annalicia, I, I've only talked to her once and I got in her. I, you know, it's a, I talk to you guys and usually I just have it all turned down, but sometimes I'll turn it up. Right. I will, like you saw maybe with Ruslan, Ruslan, turn it down, turn it up. Turn it. It's so hard for you guys to argue against an attorney. Like we're really just playing with you guys. It's so hard. We just, it's like, just it's like a cat with a ball. We just kind of play with you a little bit, but yeah, you no, know, I was, I was messing around. I was just messing around with her. I just joking. So. Yeah. When I talked to Ed Alicia that time, there was a couple of times when I had to turn it up a little I'm bit. I'm joking. I, I really, I think she makes some good points too, to be honest with you. Sorry. I, just I don't. What, what, I, I can't even remember the conversation. Well, the I mean. points that she makes that I can see her perspective is that if, if women, um, if women are in a certain position where, uh, they feel that their own men are not necessarily taking care of them financially. They want to explore other options outside of the men that they're around. So I do understand that. I just don't think that many of them can do that. I just don't even remember that conversation. I, it was so long ago. I don't remember yeah. it. 
Yeah, and Alicia. She it's this black. I think she's black, guys, for the chat, but she does not like black men. <laughs> She well, you don't think she, like, you don't think like, she like, brings like, up some good points, maybe from time to time. I mean, the, I, the, I, I, you you know way more of her content than me. The only the only thing I know anything about her is when we had that conversation on Destiny's channel, and I showed her how her thinking was flawed. If you go back, you will and watch that part of the conversation. You will see how I exposed her illogical thinking. And she was saying all types of stuff that didn't make sense. And going back on her word, she was moving goalposts. You know, if this that's is the what type of do. well, it's that's that's not a reason to 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 say, well, I'm gonna give him a pass. All right. I don't if you're gonna give her a pass because she's a woman, that's not something that I, I I'm you don't I'm think we do that every day in society? I there don't men, I don't but, know what you do. I don't okay. okay. <laughs> if if men weren't doing that every day, you wouldn't have any clients. If men weren't doing what? Giving women passes. Men get into these arrangements with women. Men and they know want women. sex. I don't know. Not, yeah, I no, I agree. No, I, I agree with that. I, I have clients with... because men want ass. I'm not sure you've thought about this through. Men want ass a lot. But can you get ass? You can get ass without getting married, though. You can get ass without getting married. That's true. Yeah, so men enter into arrangements and give women passes on their nature just over getting ass. I'm not like, sure that what a pass means. I mean, men tolerate stuff. Mm -hmm. Men tolerate stuff, but okay. you know, men. Listen, I, 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 you can, you can give all the passes you want to Annalisa. I don't, I don't cut her any fucking slack. If you don't like black men, I'm not fucking cutting you any slack. Yeah. So, I mean, yeah. Did, you have, did you have anything else you want to add? That's to? it. That's it for me. I'm going to holla at you later, though. It was good to be up here. I I'm looking into your class, though. I heard your class is pretty good, uh, lead attorney. The mastermind or the, the YouTube? The streaming class. It's excellent, to be honest. I took a podcasting I, class. I it, get was my numbers up. it was $2,000. It was $2,000. It was not. It, I was like, I can't. It was like four hours long. It was stupid. I was like, I can't believe this cost $2,000. My my course is like five hundred dollars and it's eighteen hours long. It's like it's the best fucking class and, on and streaming. And is it true you can teach people like you have? You had any people? I saw like the short preview where you're talking about you know you you show your numbers and how much you make a month. Have you had some success stories with people in doing that? Yeah, I mean, listen, you saw my co-host Av man, she's killing the game. She had the largest uh monetization party basically in the history of black youtube i mean she made about damn i don't want to say how much she fucking made but it was <laughs> it was a lot of money a lot like way more than i made way more than kevin made way more than osha way more than anybody made wow. anybody like it was wow. so much fucking money and that's money that she got when she reached a thousand <laughs> subscribers <laughs> What? It's oh, yeah. so ridiculous because it's a monetization party. It's ridiculous. This YouTube thing, man, it's it's the knowledge has come so far. I remember when I started two, three years ago, I didn't know any of this stuff, man. I dicked around for a year just to get a thousand subs. You know, uh SB got ten thousand already, man. It's like y'all are just so fast. Y'all are growing so fast. It's amazing. Yeah. So listen, I gotta share something with Eric. Oh, excuse me, Patriot. Uh, Patriot, and when you just said it. I'm looking into your class. Um, I thought you was joking with no, me. No, I am. My, no, listen. No. Oh. Oh, I'm no, I am. My, my channel sucks. No, no, no. I thought you were joking with me. And I was going to say, wife, Ed? <laughs> the wife. <laughs> my class. Me and you had. <laughs> it was just, I thought you were joking with me. And I was going to say, wife, Yeah, Ed? you should have me teach your class okay. about telling women to be quiet. Really? Yeah, that, that that's probably be the part. most important yeah. lesson. Meekness is important. You're exactly right. So, Thank all you. right. I'm going to holler at you later. All right. Bye-bye. <laughs> Patriarch is something. He's something else. But anyway, listen, if we don't have any more callers, uh, listen, Lee, this has been fantastic. I appreciate you so very much. Um, you have helped me out a lot, and I appreciate it. I follow what you do. You know it. I'm always showing up in the background. I may not say too much, but I'm always there watching, paying attention. And, you know, me and Mr. Boss appreciate you and what you've done tonight has been excellent. It has been a great conversation. I hope you've helped a lot of people with the information that you've given and maybe one day we'll do it again. 
Absolutely. I really appreciate you having me on. I want to congratulate you on all of your success. It's clear the effort and the, the the money that you are putting behind your channel with all the camera angles and everything. It really, it, it makes, it inspires me to step my game up, to be honest. I only got this one little $700 camera here. And so all the stuff that you guys are doing, you and your husband, it's it's amazing. So the growth that you guys are experiencing is, is absolutely deserved. Thank you. All right, guys. Listen, comment section, you have been terrific. Bolo, the show is over. <laughs> I can't believe you just pulled up. But listen, thank you, guys. I'm going to be back on Monday night with Black Man Unfiltered. But for now, you have a terrific rest of the weekend, and we'll see you again on Monday. Thank you, and good night. Good night, guys. Let me to listen to flow. It's so different with distance we roam in the zones where nothing get hurt anymore. I just wish I was home when I stepped through front door. Instead, I'm alone and completely unsure. And even though you're screaming out with the best of intentions, I don't get it. Why do you always gotta ask me to stay? Why you always gotta go? Playing house, this ain't a home with your soul on the road. Say, why you always gotta go? Playing house, this ain't a home with your soul on the road. See, I've been lost in my thoughts, and my thoughts say too scared to usher you off. Sorry, Mom, I just thought you were my world. Now you're not. And I'm just sitting, smoking, sloping in the days Cause my days ain't been the same since I drove here I remember the way you wrote letters in blue ink You and me was in love Think about what your crew think I know your moms probably think I'm a bastard Your pops probably wanna beat my to death and take up in my casket But I got sick of fighting, bickering, fussing Over nothing, cussing Instead of even watching the death of discussions that we once had Days that we once spent in the backseat of our cars With the poets at sunset It's funny how love can fall out the foreground Get pushed into the back of your mind We used to twist this bliff and laugh and relax Are you crying? And I'm trying to find the reason So I ask, does forever ever happen? Or is it always fade to black? I can't stay No, I always gotta go Playing house, this ain't a home with my soul on the road. I can't stay. No, I always gotta go. Playing house, this ain't a home with my soul on the road.